Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, before I even get started, I have to remind you, soccer season has begun. So I have to get these videos in whenever and wherever I can. You don't, you guys don't even want to know where I am recording this video, but if you see me looking over to the side, I'm just making sure nobody's coming down the hall to boot me out. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to be covering um, atrioventricular um canal defects versus patent ductus arteriosus. Now, patent ductus arteriosus, when it comes to peds, um, congenital diseases, you're asked about this a lot. So you definitely have to know about these two disorders before I get started. As always, please help support my channel, like this video, uh, share this video on your social media platform or maybe with a coworker or a classmate, even your nursing instructor. Uh, well, maybe not this particular video because it's not too professional, but I'm trying my best, guys. I'm working with what I got. And don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Okay, guys, let's get started. So um, if you haven't watched my part one, go watch my part one. This is actually part two, but I'm going to be caught, um, covering all of these um, cardiac congenital disorders. Now, Atrial ventricular um, canal defect and patent ductus arteriosus, both of these also are acyanotic, which means you should not expect to see that patient turning blue because of that lack of, lack of oxygen. And you're going to see why very shortly. So these are acyanotic disorders. That is very important for you to remember. And two, both of these disorders, these patients are very high risk for heart failure, and you're about to learn why. So let's start with the AV canal defect. That's this one right here. I want you guys to take a look. Let me make this bigger for you. Take a look. Look at what's happening. Now, remember, what did I do with my pen? I don't know. Um, this is the right side of the heart, and I'm lying. This is the left side of the heart, and this is the right side of the heart. So remember how unoxygenated uh, blood will come through the superior inferior vena cava, goes through the right atrium, right ventricle, goes out through the semilunar va um, valve so that it can pick up oxygen in the lungs, right? It picks up oxygen in the lungs, and it's supposed to come back um, to the left atrium, ventricle, go up through, through the aorta and go out to the tissues, such as, you know, your blood, your, your brain, your kidneys, all that good stuff. Guys, I'm sorry. I think I called um, the pulmonary valve, the semilunar valve. My apologies, guys. You know what I meant. But anyway, so the blood is supposed to go up through here, through the aorta to perfuse all of your organs and your tissues. But look at what's happening. When the oxygenated blood that came back from the lungs, it came from the left and right side of the lungs, right? And it goes to that left atrium, left ventricle, and it's supposed to go up through the aorta. Look at what's happening, guys. This is not closed. So now you got oxygenated blood mixing with unoxygenated blood. On both sides, it's going to the right atrium and the right ventricle. Do you see why this is an acyanotic disorder? The reason they're not turning blue is because there is still some oxygen present. It's mixing, okay? That's why it's acyanotic. Let's take a look. The description for atrioventricular um, canal defect, incomplete fusion of the endocardial cushions. Clinical manifestations, the patient usually has moderate to severe heart failure. Guys, I don't think I talked about this in the first video, but I'll mention it now. What do you think they mean when they're talking about heart failure? There is so much fluid that that heart cannot pump out effectively, okay? It doesn't have enough strength to pump out all that fluid. What is going to be something distinct? When you see this, you know they're talking about AV canal disorder, nothing else. Look there is a loud systolic murmur. There may be mild cyanosis, but look at what it says. There may be mild cyanosis that increases with crying. Why? Because when you're crying, um, uh, your uh, metabolic rate has increased. It takes energy to cry. You need oxygen to cry, right? But generally speaking, you don't see that patient turning blue. That's why it falls under a cyanotic. So when you see, or hear, I should say, loud systolic murmur, you better be thinking of your AV canal defect. Oh, the, what I wrote here, in case you want to wrote, 
in case you want to know, I wrote not at resto. So if the patient's crying, obviously they're doing something where they need oxygen. You may see a little bit of cyanosis, but not when they're at rest. That's very important for you guys to know. Now let's look at patent ductus arteriosus. And this is the one as nursing students, you guys would be questioned more whether um, you're in school right now for peds or if even if you're taking a major exam like ATI, NCLEX, uh, HESI, when it comes to these congenital disorders, this is one of the ones that they like to ask about the most. Make sure you know it. So with the pain duct ductus arteriosus, this also falls under a cyanotic. You don't expect to see that patient turning blue, but you do expect them to have heart failure. Now let's look to see what's going on here. All right, remember how this um, blood is unoxygenated because it's coming from the body and it's supposed to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen, right? Look at what's happening. The blood that's already oxygenated over here and is supposed to be going out the aorta to feed your brain, your pancreas, your eyeballs, right? There's a little hole right here. So some of that oxygenated blood is getting mixed with the unoxygenated blood that's supposed to be going to the lungs to pick up oxygen. And that is why this falls under acyanotic. Patients still getting some oxygen. So you do not expect to see them turning blue. Look at this description. Um, wait, before I get to the descrip description, let's go back to the title. Patent. What does patent mean? That means in, intact. Something's intact. It has not been damaged. It has not been harmed. Okay. So uh, pain ductus arteriosus. This is failure of the fetal ductus arteriosus, the artery connecting the aorta and the pulmonary artery. This is what we just saw to close within the first week of life, first weeks of life. It's supposed to close within the first weeks of life. So when it doesn't close, it's staying the same. It has not changed. That's why it's called patent ductus arteriosus. Failure of the fetal ductus arteriosus to close within the first weeks of life. The continued patency of this vessel allows blood to flow from the higher pressure aorta. They're talking about, let me scroll down. They're talking about here, right here. They're talking about right here. This high pressure aorta, remember all of the oxygenated blood is supposed to be going out to the body, but look what it says. The continued patency of this vessel allows blood to flow from high pressure aorta, aorta to low pressure pulmonary artery, which causes a left to right shunt. And that's how it works. Um, blood is going to flow from the high pressure area to low pressure area, the place of least resistance. Clinical manifestations. What are key words? When we see this, we know that they're talking about PDA and not anything else. So the patients may be in some, may be asymptomatic. They're not going to be turning blue or show signs of heart failure. There is a characteristic. Whenever you guys see that word characteristic, characteristic, it's another way for saying classic, hallmark, cornerstone. That means when you see this, you better be thinking this. Okay, characteristic machinery-like murmur. When you see machinery-like murmur, you need to be thinking of PDA. Machinery-like murmur, a widened pulse pressure and bounding pulse results from the runoff, blah, blah, blah. Point is, besides that machinery-like murmur, you see widened pulse pressure, bounding pulse along with that machinery-like murmur, 100% you better be thinking PDA. Medical management, administration of endomethacin, that's a prostaglandin inhibitor. Um, if you guys don't know what that is, go to my pharmacology playlist. I'd have a video on that. So anyway, administration of endomethacin, a prostaglandin inhibitor, has proved successful in closing a PDA in preterm infants and some newborns. And that's it, guys. That is your biggest difference between these two. Make sure you understand these are acyanotic disorder, excuse me, acyanotic and heart failure. That's it. Guys, let me know what you think about this short video. Um, let me know in the comment section anything that you'd like to see me cover that I haven't done so already or you'd like me to go more in depth. No problem. Let me know in the comments. Please don't forget to support my channel by either going to my website, purchasing an audio lesson, or sharing my content. And don't forget, you guys can catch me almost every single day um, covering different nursing questions on my other social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Don't forget, guys, Sunday, August 21st, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going live. I'm going to be covering priority and delegation. It's going to be a multi part series. 
You don't want to miss it. The book that I'm going to be using that I strongly encourage you to have a copy of, look in the comments section. Um, from what I understand, the students have said that you can get a free PDF at zlibrary.com or .org. Look it up. But I encourage you to have a copy of um, that book that I'm going to be covering. It's very good. It's really going to um, enlighten you in regards to um, content that you should know for NCLEX. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will catch me on the next video.